Thank you, Melissa, for being here with us today, of course. I'm very excited because we're gonna dive into one of the most growing issues today, and especially in this market, double brokering. But I think more importantly, we're gonna talk about ways to prevent it, right? To right. make sure that we aren't getting ourselves into situations. So, of course, with you being here, we're gonna dive into data that can help us get through that as well. So, I wanna start off with you and what you've seen through the work you're doing at Triumph Pay in regards to the elevation of double brokering and how that's affecting a lot of the customer network that you're working with. Yeah, yeah. Th first, thank you for allowing us to be up here. It's always a pleasure to be able to be here with Freight Waves and spend time with you guys. And um, this is a huge topic, and I think you know, what we're seeing is that it's, it's always been there. Double brokering has been a thing in yeah. our industry forever. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, 12 or so years ago that regulation was passed that made any overflow that a carrier had that they were giving to their partner carriers to carry for them had to be done through a broker authority and have the appropriate bonds in place. And so it's, it's always happened. It's been there. Um, it just was acceptable. Yeah. Um, and now, over time, as we see the fragmentation of the industry come into play, we're starting to see, you know, bad actors really learn yeah. those holes and those weaknesses and start to take advantage of it. And so you'll have single, you know, bad actors that, you know, go broker a load or, or take a load and get somebody else to haul it and they keep a spread and they're pretending to be a broker yep. or a dispatcher, but without the proper authority. Typically, the carriers who haul the load get paid. Everything seems to work out. No big red flags come up. Shippers aren't getting called, et cetera. But what we've seen in the last you know, six to, to nine months is as the freight cycle turned, mm -hmm. as everyone started to have to pay more attention to the bottom line, their expenses, their losses, their carrier capacity, what was happening to, to meet their shipper needs, their customer needs, it all started to rise back up to the surface. When we were booming a year ago, two years ago, nobody was paying attention to the losses that were being written off because we're all just cashing yeah. checks, right? There's a lot of checks being cashed. Everyone was doing great, having yeah. record quarters. But as that changed, and it changed very quickly, everyone is diligent about what is happening in my network and how do I become a better operator um, and, and improve my business. And it started coming out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started getting the phone calls from our clients saying, hey, I've got an issue with this carrier. I think they're double brokering. Can you put their payments on hold while I go figure it out? And so as we would do that, we'd look at it. It's one broker calling us and saying, I have an issue. We'd look at that carrier across our entire network and see that they're doing the same thing in multiple places. So, for example, a 10, 10 truck carrier is doing 10 trucks worth of freight for broker A, mm -hmm. and we're seeing it at broker B, C, D, E, and F, and we know now they're doing 100 trucks worth of volume, mm -hmm. but they only have 10 assets. Yeah. Obviously, it's a red flag, and so that's, that's why we're seeing it start to come up more often, is just we're all paying more attention to what's happening with our businesses, trying to make sure that we stay profitable and, and thrive in this market. Well, and I think what's interesting, really this topic is almost about how can you use your partnerships to mitigate that risk and to see these signs. And I'd love for you to, to really showcase how large Triumph Pay's network is and, and how many invoices that you're uh, facilitating for the industry because in order to pull that off, or to mm -hmm. see those trends, to really track those carriers, you need a partner who, who has that uh, capability, who has that uh, reach, right, right, in the industry. Uh, how have you built that network and, and how is Triumph Pay grown to be able to facilitate that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So when we look at where Triumph Pay started, we were just a payments provider. Um, as you all know, we, we did an acquisition of Hubtran a couple years ago and built the actual payments network. And in that payments network, yes, we are processing payments for folks, but we're also doing the front end audit um, and, and data integration through the network where we're fully integrated from the payor and the payee's perspective. So we can have visibility um, into both of those. From a payments perspective, 
annualized, we're, we're paying just over 20, 20 and a half billion dollars a year in today's freight environment. Yeah. But we see over $37 billion worth. And so that is a lot of freight. Those are transactions that are, that are crossing the network um, from our brokers to our factors to carriers. And that visibility allows us to see what's happening. That's nearly 40% of the brokered freight market. Yeah. You get a great cross section of, of what carriers are doing. We're all using the same carriers, right? They're, yeah. they're all the same MCs that yes. are out there that are active. Um, there, there's not a lot of truly dedicated carriers just to one broker. We find them working from upwards of, you know, 10 to 150, 200 of our brokers on the platform, mm -hmm. the same carriers operating. And so having that scope of data and, and the integration to the source of truth from the brokers and the factors, we're able to put the analysis together that says this doesn't look right. Yeah. And we certainly have to do it with partnerships. We don't have all the information. We are not experts in carrier identity. Um, we're not experts in insurance. We're not experts in how to broker a load. Mm -hmm. um, but taking the information that we have and collaborating with others in the industry to bring that to market is really you know, how we were able to accomplish it. Yeah. Well, you've also partnered though with the right people That's right. to get that carrier identity. Uh, clearly Highway yes. was most recently announced uh, in that partnership, which uh, can you tell us a little bit about the early uh, findings that you've seen from that partnership and really how that works uh, yeah. with Triumph Pay as well? Yeah, well, certainly it was easy to have conversations yeah. with Highway uh, <laughs> given Jordan Graft and the relationship that we have. And, you know, if those of you who don't know, Jordan really got Triumph Pay off the ground and, and built it to where it is today, and now has gone off and started the highway relationship or the highway entity. And so that is, it's really exciting because they're looking at solving problems in carrier identity, similar to how he built Triumph Pay to, to solve problems in, in payments. And so it's just taking a different approach. And so they were able to build their carrier identity platform and, and get the, the real-time information about the assets to the VIN level um, that allows us to know with confidence the MC, the carrier that we're talking about, um, to know what they actually should be capable of doing based on the, the verified assets. And so that combination together just made sense. So as yeah. soon as we started getting questions about, you know, is this real or how can we identify what, you know, which carriers might be bad actors, the first person we talked to, was, or our first company was Highway, and you know, how could we do this through data integration? It's not a UI per se that we want to push up another web page and be able to show carriers we understand the value of those direct integrations to get the information to the people right in front of them um, so that as they're making those decisions or as you automate those decisions, that data can be in your TMS for your carrier reps to you know, decide which carrier do I want to use with having the information they need right in front of them. Or if you have sophisticated algorithms, just simply pulling those carriers out so that they're never loaded in the first place. I think. Uh, clearly, the, the technology is out there, the partnerships are out there, the comp there's various providers, even of our carrier identity uh, mm -hmm. software, et cetera, that's on the rise, clearly, as this becomes more of an issue. I'm, I'm interested, as you're working with especially brokers, shippers, et cetera, uh, how do you feel their responsibility has uh, grown in, in now actually executing on this? Because you mentioned, right, when the market's great, that risk could potentially be worth maybe to them in that time the, the mm -hmm. value of making the wrong choice, right? But you and I have talked, there's so many other risks that could come, not just with right. that one load transaction, but even in the future, that risk could become much larger. How do you feel the responsibility of brokers and shippers together have, have really grown as this problem has grown as well? Yeah, I think, I think everybody is paying attention to it now because of the bottom line, right? Yeah. We, and you know, a year ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation in the same way because we were in dire need of capacity. We had so much freight. We had to keep things moving. Mm -hmm. And so making you know, transformational changes in how you operate and do business is really hard to do in those times. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, we're in a situation where we have the flexibility, we have the opportunity, and now we have the data yes. and the tools to be able to make very important decisions that are going to take us forward. None of us love do double brokering. 
all of us love getting our, our loads covered and knowing that it got delivered. It's when things go wrong that is a problem. And for, for the brokers out there, you know, your shipper is who's responsible legally to make sure that the carrier who actually hauled the load is paid. Yeah. But you're going to cover that for them, right? You don't want your shipper to be in a position where they're yeah. having to make that payment to the carrier. So now you're paying that invoice twice. Um, that's the least of your worries, in my opinion. I think where it really starts to get dangerous and it really starts to um, pile up, especially for a mid-sized broker or a smaller broker, is when you have the, you know, the freight is stolen in yeah. that situation. So you get a double brokered you know, situation, the freight ends up not getting delivered, or there are claims because the carrier who delivered it doesn't have the safety record or the insurance um, that you would expect them to, that is your responsibility to vet. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you start having to pick up those costs. And I think the, the scariest for me is knowing that when you have a truck on the road that you've not vetted, you don't know their safety record, and if there is an, an accident or a fatality, now you're looking at, at finding yourself in the middle of, of a potential nuclear verdict, and that is where it can be you know, a game ender for a lot of customers out there, a lot of brokers out there. It, it's just, is the risk really worth it? Yeah. Um, before the, the Triumph Pay Highway relationship, we didn't have the ability to see it at the scale we do now and to be able to act on it at the scale that we do now. And so there really is a shift in responsibility. You can't fix something you can't see and you don't know. But once you know, you can't unsee it. And we mm -hmm. say that, you know, in the banking industry, when you see something bad that's happened, you can't unsee it. Yeah. You've got to act. You've got to, you know, you've got to make sure that, you know, regu regulatory requirements and compliance is all taken care of. And, and you dot the I's and cross the T's. It's kind of the same thing here. Yeah. Once you see that you have a bad actor or the integrity is a problem for a broker, you're not getting the insurance coverage that you're expecting you have to respond. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I wouldn't want to sit in front of a, a jury and be asked, why did you load this truck that you knew was a bad guy or this yeah. carrier that you knew was a bad guy and now you're, you're faced with a nuclear verdict because of it. So um, the responsibility gets big and it, it, it becomes very important very fast mm -hmm. when, when, you can, when you know where there's a problem now. Yeah, and in those situations, it's likely the broker they'll go after because it's the one who can actually pay the bill. Even if you could find a potential carrier that right. maybe stole a freight, damaged it, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, the, the shipper isn't going to want to go after the carrier they know isn't going to be able to pay out a $2 right. million dollar verdict. So I think we've seen a lot of cases, right, in the last uh, couple of years that are really showcasing. They're out there. The precedent yeah. hasn't been set the yet, but they're out there. The precedent hasn't been set, but yeah. it's it's teeter-tottering around that point. Right. Why not be proactive and get your operations set up to avoid that risk at all? And what's interesting, because we now are starting to get to the point where we have enough data uh, where we can start treating these transactions, partnerships, like you said, the financial system. Uh, if you have a poor credit score, there's no back and forth of, oh, well, the bank could make money if we, no, it's you are denied or you're accepted. Right. So how do you feel uh, with the tools available today that maybe uh, you could see a change in the operation, even the carrier reps or different positions and, and mitigating that risk as well? Yeah, I think nobody wants to to load a bad guy, right? Nobody wants to put freight on a truck that they're not sure or are believed to be putting on a truck that they're not sure is going to yeah. get to where they want it to be. Um, what I think is, is really important about this is we're not just protecting the brokers by solving this problem or the shippers by solving this problem. We're protecting the legitimate carriers out there. Yeah. And so they are working hard every day to build their businesses. They are fighting for um, you know, the rates out there with, with bad guys that are undermining them and undercutting them. And so the more, and we talked today, you know, about shipper of choice. Yeah. You know, brokers want to be the broker of choice and having good relationships with your carriers that are 
legitimate, that are operating and providing a service in the way that you need them to for your customers, those are the ones that you want to have the strong relationships with. So getting your carrier reps and your technology and your back office operations to ensure that they are focused on those carriers will only pay off mm -hmm. um, in the end because you're eliminating the competition that's unfair yeah. to them, um, and you're spending more time building those long-term relationships so that they're there with you in the cycles, right? How do you see that affecting pricing as we start to look at, okay, hey, these are bad, bad actors, good, good actors. Do you see, uh, how do you see that over time, uh, the fraud that we're experiencing affecting capacity and pricing as a whole? Yeah, I think it, right now it's really early to be able to determine how much of an impact it's gonna have on capacity. There are so many factors to capacity. There's so many factors to rates. You know, we have a lot of carriers leaving the market right now just because they, they can't operate at a profit. Um, but, you know, what percent, and, and we haven't been able to share this yet, but what percent of carriers are double brokering and how much capacity does that truly take out? Because someone is picking up the load, right? Yeah, there is exactly. a driver there, yep. right? So it's not removing drivers off the road. Mm -hmm. It's just removing bad companies mm -hmm. out of the system. Um, so you're not going to see a huge drop off in capacity. The capacity is just going to have a direct connection to the broker. Yeah. Um, in terms of you know rates, you remove the the unfair competition in in bidding for those. It will start to see you know, see some adjustments that bring it up. There's so many factors around the industry that that create that. It's the actual capacity of drivers. It's you know the consumer's willingness to buy supply the you know supply and demand. Are we moving? More pallets or not, right? Yeah. Is there more containers coming in or not? Exactly. Um, that's going to have the biggest impact. But I think incrementally it, it will have um, a positive impact from a carrier's perspective yeah. on, the, for, on the, the invoice prices and eventually flow through as the brokers have to kind of fill that gap while it, it makes itself into the shipper contracts. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be hard. I think there's a lot of brokers out there that operate uh, with a little bit more leniency, but as we talked about, the risks are getting much higher, mm -hmm. and it's perfect timing to start putting those plans into right. play. Now, uh, this is happening more in the market we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. Do you think as the market changes, it'll alleviate itself, or do you think this is something that's here? I think it's here to stay. Um, you know, I, all of you out there, you go on you know, vacation, you go to swipe your card to buy something in another country, and either you get a text message that says, is this really you, is this your transaction? Or you get declined and have to call your bank and tell them that it really is you. The bad guys will continue to find ways to be able to yeah. cheat the systems, to, yeah. to do fraud. And so it's up to us in the industry, the technology providers, the brokers, the shippers, all the participants to find ways to continue to fight it. Mm -hmm. And so the, the crime rings, the bad actors, the fraudsters, they're here, they're here to stay, and they will continue to get smarter and smarter and more creative, and it's up to all of us to stay ahead of them and try and, and find more ways to protect each other um, and to protect the end consumer um, in, in getting the, the food and clothes and such delivered to their door. Yeah, I think there's that question out there that's who's responsible for helping to alleviate this type of fraud, mm -hmm. and I honestly feel like probably every participant at this point can do something a little bit better to, right. to avoid it. A quick minute or so here. What is Triumph Pay doing the rest of you know, the back half of the year to help with fraud and to help with customers uh, uh, in other ways as well, operationally? Yeah, so double brokering is just one of the ways that we're trying to, to bring back value to the industry. When you look at the other types of fraud that happen, the more traditional types, somebody coming in and trying to steal credentials. We've got an industry where I think all of us, we I, I know Garrett talked about this yesterday, we use the same username and password for as many systems as we can <laughs> because it's hard to remember them, right? Yeah, We're yeah. all getting older, it's harder for Not us here. to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, you, know, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> but when one vendor in the industry gets breached, mm -hmm. we're all at risk 
because it is highly likely that the users of our systems are doing that. And when you have technologies where payments can happen or bank account changes can be made, you've got to be diligent. And so Triumph Pay does all of the validation for bank accounts that come into our platform to ensure that the owner of the bank account is the the carrier, not just that the user is who we think it is. Yeah. So that's one of the ways. Um, other ways in terms of notice of assignments and factor relationships and making sure that factors aren't being defrauded. Um, and, and you know we've seen requests for factors to change their bank accounts. We're like, we know that's not right. right? Yeah. We're not going to allow that to happen and misdirect all this money. So it's just using our systems to, to further improve the payment process and protect in all of those ways. Yeah, well, I think especially with Highway and the partnerships that you have there, I'm excited to see a year from now where a lot of this is uh, hopefully getting mitigated and all of us are working on our processes yeah. together to get this under control as well. So right. thank you so much for thank coming you. and joining us with us today. And thank you everyone for coming to uh, the future of supply chain as well. Thank you everyone, <laughs> bye-bye.